I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Friday, December the 6th, 2013. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry left Israel today after conducting meetings with both Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. Kerry met with Netanyahu a total of three times over the last two days and once with Abbas, after which he said that both leaders were still committed to continuing negotiations. Speaking at Ben Gurion Airport outside of Tel Aviv before flying back to the U.S., Kerry said, I believe we are closer than we have been in years to bringing about the peace and prosperity that all the people in this region yearn for. Kerry also restated his commitment to Israel's security with regard to the negotiations. He said if Israel's security cannot be increased through this agreement, it is very difficult to make an agreement. Kerry had reportedly discussed post-agreement security arrangements with Abbas as well as with Netanyahu, with whom he met together with U.S. General John Allen. Allen was accompanying Kerry after being designated by President Obama to assess the potential threats to Israel and the region from a future Palestinian state and to come up with possible security arrangements that could be implemented following an agreement. Regarding Iran, Kerry said that he understood the Prime Minister's criticism of the recent deal in Geneva, saying Netanyahu has every right in the world to make his views known with respect to his concerns about the security of his country. Kerry also added that Netanyahu has been extremely constructive concerning the next steps being taken to reach a final agreement with Iran and said that in that regard, Israel and the United States are absolutely in sync, not an ounce of daylight between us with respect to the need to make sure that Iran cannot achieve a nuclear weapon. Kerry also took the opportunity before leaving Israel to address the passing of former South African President Nelson Mandela, who died last night at the age of 95 in Johannesburg. He said the lessons that Mandela taught the world had special significance at this moment in history regarding the talks between Israel and the Palestinians. Kerry quoted Mandela saying, it always seems impossible until it is done. Kerry said, I think it's appropriate for us to think about that in the context of the work that I've been doing here in the last couple of days and over these last months and of the hopes and aspirations of the people of this region. That example of Nelson Mandela, Kerry said, is an example that we all need to take to heart as we face the challenge of trying to reach a two-state solution. Israeli leaders mourned the passing of the South African leader as well. Prime Minister Netanyahu wrote on his Facebook page that Mandela was the father of his nation, a man of vision, a freedom fighter who opposed violence. He further wrote he worked to heal the tears in South African society and succeeded with his personality to prevent outbreaks of racial hatred. Israeli President Shimon Peres, who met Mandela when he visited Israel in 1999, said the world has lost a venerable leader who changed the path of history. Peres said, above everything, Mandela was a builder of bridges of peace and dialogue. And Jewish groups here in the U.S. expressed their condolences for Mandela. Jewish Council for Public Affairs President Steve Guto said Mandela embodied courage in the face of severe injustice. He said he stood up against some of the vilest discrimination and inspired all those who shared in the belief that every human is created in the image of the divine. Director of the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, David Saperstein, hailed Mandela as an inspiration for the world for choosing to use his influence after being liberated to champion human rights for all and reconciliation for his divided country. B'nai B'rith International mourned Mandela's passing, saying he will be remembered as one of the 20th century's leading figures. Anti-Defamation League National Director Abe Foxman said that while Mandela had suffered tremendously under the apartheid regime, remarkably, he did not dwell on retribution, but rather on reconciliation and healing. Foxman also noted that while in recent decades the ADL did disagree with the South African leader from time to time on some issues, he said those differences did not diminish our respect and esteem for this upstanding moral leader. 
And the American Jewish Committee's executive director, David Harris, said as Jews, we honor every year the miracle of freedom, teaching our children that we were once slaves in the land of Egypt. Mandela's life, Harris said, embodied a personal and national journey from subjugation to freedom. We are indelibly inspired, he said, by his example and can say of him, as we can say of few others, that he truly helped repair the world. Both President Obama and Secretary of State Kerry are expected to address the annual Saban Forum in Washington this weekend. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu will also address the forum via video. The forum is sponsored by the Saban Center for Middle East Policy at the Brookings Institution. And this year's gathering marks the 10th anniversary of the forum, which is an annual dialogue between American and Israeli leaders from government, business, and society, and from across the political spectrum. Other speakers this year include Israeli Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman, former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton, U.S. Special Envoy to the Israeli-Palestinian negotiations Martin Indyk, Israeli Justice Minister Sipi Livni, Israeli Minister of Strategic and Intelligence Affairs Yuval Steinitz, former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert, and Palestinian Chief Negotiator Saeb Arakat. The 2013 Forum will examine the political changes taking place across the Middle East, including the resumption of the Israeli-Palestinian peace talks and the ongoing nuclear negotiations with Iran, as well as the civil war in Syria. Chairman of the Saban Forum, film and TV producer Chaim Saban, said with the significant challenges and opportunities taking place at this moment, the forum could not convene at a more critical time. Hello, everybody. Yeah. President Obama held two Hanukkah receptions at the White House this week at the end of the holiday. The menorahs used in each reception were connected to the Holocaust. The first menorah used was designed by a Holocaust survivor who in 1986 designed the menorah to emulate the Statue of Liberty on the occasion of its centennial of the construction in New York. The second menorah was from the former Czechoslovakia. Abraham and Chaya Ettinger had donated it to their synagogue there in 1922. The Ettingers were later killed in the Holocaust. That menorah was lit by Czech Holocaust survivors Margit Meisner and Martin Weiss. At the receptions, the president addressed the issue of Iran and his commitment to Israel's security. He also noted the just-reported passing of Nelson Mandela and said building a future of security and peace is not easy, but the story of Hanukkah, of survivors like Margit and Martin, leaders like Nelson Mandela, remind us that those who came before us overcame even greater obstacles than those that we face. So let's take strength, the president said, from their struggles and from their sacrifice. Let's give thanks for miracles large and small. Let's recommit ourselves to building a future that shines with hope and freedom and peace. And a magical moment occurred during a Matis Yahoo Festival of Lights concert in Providence, Rhode Island earlier this week, when an onstage marriage proposal shocked the audience in the middle of the show. Providence fans were enjoying celebrating the seventh night of Hanukkah on Tuesday with the Jewish music superstar who may have evolved his outward appearance but who consistently delivers on his commitment to the Jewish tradition on stage, incorporating Jewish music and ritual wherever appropriate. Accompanied throughout the show by Israeli saxophonist Daniel Zamir, Matisyahu lit a giant menorah on stage and danced under the spinning light of a disco dreidel. Hip-hop artist Kosha Dills joined Matisyahu on stage to freestyle for the audience before bringing the soon-to-be-engaged couple on stage, where Matisyahu led the crowd in a round of Simon Tov and Mazel Tov. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Friday, December the 6th. 2013. Remember, live Shabbat services are coming up at 6 o'clock from New York City's Central Synagogue here on Shalom TV and ShalomTV.com. I'm Tisha Bader. Shabbat Shalom.